Hi, Internet. My name is Mark. I'm a student at NYU, double majoring in computer science and language and mind. Language and mind is essentially psychology and linguistics and a splash of philosophy all bunched together. I'm a native English speaker, uh, and I took French throughout secondary school from the 7th through the 12th grade, and I will be taking a class in college later, and my mom spoke to me in French just a little bit throughout my childhood. Now, at the start of 2018, I wanted to tackle one project every month, but unfortunately, I wasn't anywhere near organized enough to actually do that. And so that's what I started doing this year. Over the summer, I moved on from a lot of things, I closed a lot of doors, and I decided, let's do that one month project thing again. This month, I'm teaching myself Spanish on the gamified and free platform Duolingo, and also Italian on the widely known platform Rosetta Stone. Over this past month, I have been and will continue to spend about 20 to 25, maybe even 30 minutes in each of these platforms a day, learning their respective languages. Now that I'm two weeks in and fully committed, I decided it was time to let the world know about my project. Real quick, I'd like to inform everyone that these videos and the resulting research project are in no way affiliated with Duolingo nor Rosetta Stone. When I entered school at NYU, I was pretty dead set on studying computer science and psychology. And for psychology, I was specifically interested in abnormal psychology. Most of what I read is either psychology, philosophy, or game design related topics. And as I read more about abnormal psychology, I discovered all of these cool things about how the brain interprets and understands language. Specifically, the critical period of language, which is essentially saying that humans cannot learn languages anywhere as efficiently as they can in childhood, past the age of 13 or around puberty. I will speak more about that idea of a critical period of language in a future video in this four video mini series. But anyway, I've always wanted to learn a lot of languages. The whole thing with learning language in school was there's a lack of immersion, a lack of directness. And overall, I think the curriculum may have been just too slow or not in-depth enough for what I wanted to learn. As much as my French teachers, who all had a huge role in my motivations and incentives for learning languages, did a great job, it was the curriculum that wasn't immersive enough for me. Now, I turned to Duolingo a few years ago to help me learn French and to expand my knowledge a bit. And then earlier this year, at the start, I started teaching myself Danish, but around May, right before I left for summer camp, I started realizing that the only people who speak Danish are in Denmark, and everyone in Denmark speaks English by the age of nine, pretty much. Now, I wanted to get back into the groove of things for school this year, and while I intend to take an intensive intermediate class in French while I'm at school, perhaps even if I study abroad next semester, I decided I'd take this time to learn a new language or two. Now, I wanted to push my boundaries of learning a language. And although I believe in the science about a critical period, I don't think it's impossible to learn a new language past childhood. I saw Scott Young's project, and Scott Young is the one behind the MIT challenge, where he taught himself the entire undergraduate computer science curriculum of MIT in just a year. He traveled to four different countries, one every three months for a year with a friend of his, and spoke just that one country's mother language or native language for the entire time. While immersion does play a huge role when it comes to that, I want to try to use the resources that are best at my disposal. It is arguable that Duolingo is not the best way to learn a platform because it asks you to translate and has a limited word bank. Similar idea about the word bank with Rosetta Stone. But again, if I can use these tools to maximize my efficiency in learning, why not try? I'm also part of one of the scholars program here at NYU, and one of our assignments will be to do an undergraduate research project in one of our majors. And I thought that maybe I could study some sort of second critical period, or perhaps a critical method for learning a language past childhood. Lastly, I'm interested in learning overall, and especially communication. I'll be talking about the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis and its problems in a future video, but I do believe in some way that learning a variety of language can make you think in a variety of ways. So I'm taking Linguistics 101 this semester, and as I was reading about these sparing articles about a second critical period, I asked my professor about them, and they were saying that they knew someone, and I'm summarizing here, that can't quite recall what language they were spoken to as a child because they were spoken in two or three different languages, and all of it at that time was just encoded into meaning. Now, all this information that I'm kind of spewing about this second critical period will be spoken about in a future video, those future videos of which I'll get to in a minute. But when I was creating this project, I realized there definitely needed to be some sort of metric, some way to measure my success and progress for these two platforms. I designed two rubrics for myself. The longer one, here, is overall comments on the usefulness of this program and how efficient I have learned a language. Another one, based on the curriculum of AP French, is based on how well I can use the four different components of each language, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Now, the second rubric is largely dependent on my own ability. The first rubric is sort of to 
to grade which platform is better than the other. However, this has changed. I went from saying, let's find out what's better, Duolingo or Rosetta Stone, to thinking, okay, what would be better for me in this situation? Duolingo or Rosetta Stone? What would we, what would be better for John in, situ, in this other situation? Duolingo or Rosetta Stone? And that's a new question I'm gonna be answering with these two rubrics. So why Duolingo and Rosetta Stone? Why Spanish and Italian? Duolingo and Rosetta Stone are, at least for me, the most heard of language learning platforms. There are other apps out there such as Memrise and Babbel, but I feel like these two are the big competitors. Now, when I wanted to do this project, I was like, oh, there are a bunch of languages I wanna learn. I wanna learn Russian, Japanese, and Arabic. Sort of in that order, sort of not. But then I thought, you can't really measure wildly different languages because they have such a different learning curve. So then I was thinking, okay, Danish and Swedish would be perfect, but I already know a little bit of Danish, so that's an unfair advantage. And then I boiled it down to Spanish and Italian. You can't quite pair up something like Spanish where you already know the alphabet and most of the vocab words since French is so similar and Russian, which is an entirely new alphabet and different ways of pronouncing things and all that jazz. Thus, Spanish and Italian were the two best languages to use when comparing Duolingo and Rosetta Stone, because I'm not trying to grade the languages themselves, but the efficiency of these two platforms when they're used. Now, as I mentioned, my question moved from what's better to what's better in what scenario. Now I'm two weeks into the project. And the reason why I've changed that question is because I'm realizing that between Rosetta Stone and Duolingo, there's no objectively significant difference between the two in terms of which one is better. Now each program has a great advantage and those advantages in different scenarios are what I wanna cover in this mini series. If you're a student and you're very into grammar rules and stuff like that, Duolingo will be great. They have these supplementary articles that explain you know, different verbs and their endings depending on what, you, what noun you use and all that kind of stuff. On the other hand, Rosetta Stone is great for like directly going to speak a language because it skips the English middleman as I've dubbed it and I will talk about more in a future video as well and doesn't have you translate through any English at all. It has you speaking the language immediately. Personally, I love this, but I do wonder if I didn't know the rules of French and such as, you know, you having a different verb ending as I, those unconscious things that we do in our native languages, would Rosetta Stone be as easy because these patterns are much more recognizable for me. And that's a question I will continue to attempt to answer for the last two weeks of this challenge. I've been video editing for several years now from gaming videos to vlogs and learning all these different tactics in Adobe Premiere Pro that I really wanna to put to the test with a documentary style form of filmmaking and film editing. The first video, well, is the one you're watching. I wanted to provide everyone with a good background and introduction to the project and my motivations for doing this project. I don't wanna to have to summarize it in every video because that would tack on five to 10 minutes. The second video is actually the only one that I originally planned to do. What's better, a gamified Duolingo or a systematic Rosetta Stone? This is the video where I'll go in depth on the intricacies and advantages and disadvantages of Duolingo and Rosetta Stone. Through comparisons of what makes them unique and makes them the most notable platforms out there, I'm going to try to give you as much information as I can fit into a 15 to 20 minute video. Everyone learns differently. So using the best platform, the best tool for you is essential to learning. The third video will be the idea that I might just base my undergraduate research project based off of. Is it really impossible to learn a new language as an adult? Now, there's already so much evidence showing that this is possible, such as Scott Young's project where he traveled around the world and totally immersed himself in these languages. Now, in this video, I would talk about the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis in terms of whether learning more languages can really make you think differently or interpret the world differently, and perhaps argue for or against the sparing ideas out there about a second critical period of language, and maybe even come up with a critical method myself. The fourth and final video of the mini series will be about how we could teach ourselves language in 10 minutes of phone use a day instead of scrolling through Instagram, replacing 10 minutes of social media with a new language. I got rid of Instagram and Snapchat and a bunch of other apps on my phone around last year, but I did stay on Facebook and Twitter to make sure I could keep in contact with those important to me. It felt like it freed up so much time as well, even though I do sometimes still tweet into the void on Twitter. Anyway, enough about digital minimalism. When I was using Duolingo on mobile app, I believe it was sometime last year, a little pop-up came up and said, 15 minutes a day can teach you a language. What can 15 minutes of social media do? And I swear I was thinking about that for the next like three days. I will be using the mobile apps actually starting this week for Rosetta Stone and Duolingo as well as next week. But I'm thinking the first week of October or so, I will strictly use the mobile apps and see if I can really learn a language just between classes whenever I might feel the instinct to pull out my phone and check my texts or email. Now, whether or not that's doable, I feel like is yeah pretty logical to say yes it is, but whether or not it's effective is the question that I'm going to set out and try to answer. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I've been using Duolingo for about four years now. I talked to my dad about it a lot because he works for a learning company as well. And so I wanted to finally try Rosetta Stone and say, okay, what is Rosetta Stone offering that Duolingo isn't since it's a paid program? And now finally I'm set out to answering that question. Anyway, I greatly appreciate it if you subscribe down below so you can get updated when the other three videos come out. I'm shooting for the first three weeks of October, if not within the first two weeks of October. Also, if you wanna take this time to learn a language as well, now is the best time to start doing anything you haven't already. So leave a comment down below if you're starting a language. Let me know what you think, what platform you're gonna use. I'd highly recommend both Duolingo and Rosetta Stone. Thanks again for watching. Stay awesome and don't forget to keep learning.